Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I'm your host, Michael Crane. This is going to be a really quick video. I was, uh, I'm setting up for another video to, uh, uh, to show you how to test the lag. I want to, to test our lag that we created in video number 19. And, and to do that, I'm going to need uh, three Linux boxes down here to, uh, that have at least 100, meg, 100 base T or 100 meg interfaces because our lag is going to be able to support 300 meg. And then I also needed a, a fourth box and, and this one needed to have a gigabit Ethernet interface onto it, on it because it's going to be connected into the gig port in the router and, and it's going to be uh, responding to all three of these boxes down here. So, um, uh, so that's the network set up and I'll go over that a little bit further in the video. Uh, but what I want to do in this, er, in the video where we test this, but what I want to do on this video is, uh, is show you how to set up a, a quick point to point connection for test equipment. And, um, and, and it's, it's very simple. Uh, I do it all the time and, and I wasn't actually even going to make a video out of it. But I thought some people, uh, especially beginners, might be interested in, um, in how you set it up it's, and, uh, and what the subnet mask look like and, and that sort of thing. Because it, it can be a little, it's not really tricky, but it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, to beginners. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's look at it on paper and, and log into these things and set them up. Okay, so I pulled up our network drawing and if you remember from our previous videos and and wanted to look at where we're gonna put this test box and and what I decided was uh, we need a point-to-point -point connection and instead of just creating a random point-to-point -point connection uh, I, I noticed that our visitor router here is gonna have a point-to-point -point connection to our gateway router and, and I thought okay well that's gonna be a really good place um, to put our test box. We'll just pop them in right here. The name of that box is called a Zotac. Uh, I'm not even sure if they're made anymore. But, um, and we're just going to give him, I'll just move the IP address up here. So he'll be the 162 and, and, uh, and the router will be the 161. And where this gets, uh, and, you know, we'll just ignore this for right now, the visitor router. But, uh, where this gets confusing to, um, network engineers or people who are not familiar with it is um is uh the number of ip addresses you need for two boxes so basically you're gonna have that zotac linux box plug with just a wire plug straight into the router here and and it's gonna have that we, we you know this is gonna have an ip address and this is gonna have an ip address but we actually need four ip addresses and I discussed this in quite some detail in um, in the blog number ones and one through four on uh, IP address layout. But but yeah, so basically we need a wire address, uh, host one, host two, and then a broadcast address. So to use uh, host 161, 162, we need all four of these IP addresses right here. And that's why I was saying it can get a little confusing sometimes and you can't pick just random four in a row uh like 158 through 161 that that wouldn't work it has to be um within the proper domain and like i said i explained laying all this out in um previous the previous blog so if you want to look at that i would highly recommend it okay so i've logged into the uh the dallas gateway or our gateway router and I've also logged into the Zotac and and uh, the IP address for the Zotac. Zotac's actually been in storage for quite some time. And and uh, a little side note: whenever you put something in storage, especially a headless unit, uh, make sure you write the IP address down and uh, and how to log into the box. So I've logged into our router and I've logged into the Zotac. And and let's uh, let's just set up. Uh, We'll start with a Zotac first, and um, this is a CentOS box. So uh, in CentOS, you go to it's uh, slash Etsy 
slash sys config um, slash network scripts. Okay, and we're going to be using Ethernet 0. So we're going to VI Ethernet 0. Okay. And we're going to come down here and we're going to make them 10 dot um, was it 162? Yeah, I think that's right. 10 dot, yeah, 162 with a subnet mask of 252. Okay. And uh, so that's uh, 162. And uh, see this prefix right here? This is actually the subnet mask. You know, the first two bits, so just subtract the first two bits from 32, which would be all the bits, and that gives you 30. And like I said, I've done videos on this, so don't, if you, if you need more information on it, if it was like videos, blogs one through four was on doing IP addresses. I think video blog one actually talked about it. Okay, and uh, so our gateway is going to be, um, that's actually going to be the router's IP address, right? So it's, he's, this is going to be the gateway address for him, so it's going to be 161. And uh, so we're going to say 10 dot 161 okay and um right now we're just gonna leave the dns as 10.161 uh, we don't really need it right now and uh that's it so let's um let's save him and uh, reboot him and uh come back later so on the gateway side so if we do a uh uh, oh, by the way, we are going to be putting them on the, there's only two gigabit ports in there and it's going to be, so he's going to be on gig, uh, zero one. So let's see, put him in, let's just put him right up here. So it'll be, uh, gig zero one. All right. And this, uh, we don't really need to do, put him on ETH zero. Just to uh, kind of keep everything in order. All right. So, uh, okay. So, this is going to be on gig zero one. So, let's do, uh, we'll just do a, a quick show config. And, um, yeah, so he's, he's still shut down. And here's our management interface. And one of the things, oh, I did actually name him. That's good. I, I don't remember if I remember to name him or not. But uh, yeah, so let's go and set this guy up real quick. So we're just going to do a config T. Oops. We're going to say interface uh, gig, uh, oops, yeah, zero slash one. And we're going to say his IP address is 192.168.10.161 with a subnet mask as 255.255.255. .255 .255. 5.252 all right uh, and we're going to do a no shut on him all right and uh you notice i'm not putting him in vlan 10 that's because uh, he's not actually in the same network so we don't want to confuse this go see what else we got to do with this guy so um um so it already shows media speed auto duplex auto uh, no shut on my just basically gave my IP address. Let's see. I'll do a term mon on here so you can watch as I plug it in All right, well looks like it uh, It came up. That's good uh, Let's see if we can ping them. Let's see ping uh, 192.168.10.162 Yep, excellent. So, um, you might think that's all we need, but uh, I can almost guarantee um, uh, I'm not get, so I'm I'm right now I'm SSH'd right into the uh, into the gateway router, and and that's great. But let's look let's take a look at our network drawing here real quick. So I'm I'm actually. Uh, I'm sitting on this laptop right here, okay? 
and and it shows on the drawing that I'm just directly connected into these guys, but that's not actually a case. There's actually a router here and a switch and a bunch of others, so uh, almost like a cloud right here, if you will. And and we've got to tell the router in here where this ten network lives. So um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, SSH into this router real quick and um, set up a static route. So, um, okay, so here we go. And so if I do a, um, uh, so this is the, the network my laptop's plugged into, and, and this is the router I'm, that is my gateway for my laptop. And if I do a show IP route, uh, 192.168.10.161, uh, yeah, so he has no idea. So if I tried to SSH, um, from my laptop into this so we'll just look at this real quick so if I do a session no right and I go down here to the Zotac so here's his old IP address and his new one now is gonna be 10.162 right and uh, we'll save that and we'll try to open them and and I'm I can guarantee it's gonna fail because there is, it has no idea, and while that's sitting over there failing, um, what we're going to do is we're going to come back into the Cisco here, and we're going to tell him where he lives. And uh, so, uh, and the way we're going to do that, let's look at the drawing here real quick, is, is I want to be able to SSH into this Zozac straight from my PC. So we've got to tell the router that's sitting right in here, um, how to get to this this network and and how he's going to get to it is he's going to use this this management interface so, so the router has this interface on him but he doesn't know the 10 network lives there so we're going to tell him that the 10 network lives down this this IP address right here we're going to do that with a static route inside the um inside the uh, router so we're going to do a config t we're going to say uh ip route we're going to say 192.168.10.0 uh 255.255.255.255 0. now you might be asking uh and i can do uh just this small little network right here right just these four ip addresses the problem with that is later i'm going to have to come in and add it for all the rest of this junk so so I'm just going to say, look, the whole 10 network lives. Um, and so this this first part is giving the starting IP address. So this is where it starts, and this is how big it is. This is the range, if you will. And, and we're going to say, and it lives, and to get to it, you use 192.168.1.75, which is the management interface on our gateway router. All right, and uh, so let's do Control C and save that. Write the config. Um, so let's see here. Let's do a show IP route ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot zero. Okay, well our our route is in there. Yep, yep. Show uh, IP route ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot zero. Yeah, so he knows he's connected, directly connected, on gigabit, Ethernet, and 75. So if we do a ping, 192.168.1.1, we can get to it. Yeah, well, this guy can't get to it. I'm... I'm, um... I am a little baffled. So, um, okay, so in Cisco you can do a ping, and then we're going to use the protocol IP. The target address is going to be 192.168.110.161, okay? 
Uh, we're going to repeat five times. Datagram, 100's fine. Timeout, two seconds. Extended commands. We're going to say yes. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to give it the source address of 192.168.1.1, which is IP address of the router. All right. Type server zero is fine. Um, DF bit set header no. Uh, validate reply no. Data pattern is fine. Uh, oh, we want to say verbose. Okay, verbose. Yes. See brain size no. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what happened there. I I did the same ping command, except I did it from the gateway. Um, and, and I, you know, the debug one that I was doing earlier, what I did, I did up here, I, I gave it the source address of, uh, I said, okay, I want to ping, uh, 1.1 with a source address of 161, and it, it arped everything, came back hunky-dory, and, and, then I was really confused, so then I pinged from this other router back to 161, and now, now everything works great. So uh, I'm not exactly sure. It, it's almost like ARP was it, it was not ARPing correctly or something. I, I'd have to put uh, a monitor on it and look at it, but I'm sure I couldn't repeat it even if I tried. So um, we're just going to chalk that up as a uh, uh huh. <laughs> and move on we didn't need to put a static route in this guy even though i was getting ready to do it um but this guy needed it because his default gateway is out to the internet and and we would have never found that address so he definitely needed a static route but okay so now for my pc we should be able to yeah here we go that looks much better so yeah 192 168 10.162 let's say yes and um and uh let's see here okay so now we're in uh if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and um and i'll i'll answer them anyway uh appreciate it and i'll see you next time